Hi, hello and welcome to this demo. Today we are going to talk about change data capture and how to make it work with Apache Kafka using Red Hat AMQ streams. So in this case we have an enterprise application built on PHP that is sending some orders and records into a database. We want to also be able to index the orders that we are saving into our enterprise application so we are able to query those faster using tools like Elasticsearch. You might consider implementing changes in your PHP code to start into the search index. The problem is what happens when suddenly you are not able to insert your orders in the database. This results in your index not having the latest information from your database because Elasticsearch cannot participate in a distributed transaction as it uses HTTP REST API. Most of the time we strongly advise against making dual writes with data. What can we do to solve the problem? Here enters implementing Division for Change Data Capture and Apache Kafka. Let's look at the deployment. We are in the OpenShift Developer Console in the topology view. Here we can see the enterprise application. First, we need to enable CDC features in the database. We navigate to the database terminal pod and issue the following commands. We use the international database for this setup. We want to enable CDC. And finally, we want to enable CDC for one specific table. In this case, is the DBO schema and the table name is orders. We hit go and now our database has been enabled and is ready for Division to capture the changes. Now we will use AppQ Streams component that allows us to deploy an Apache Kafka cluster easily just using Kubernetes custom resources. Let's go back to the topology view. From the topology view, we are able to start deploying our cluster. We have already installed and deployed the Red Hat MQ Streams operator. The operator installs the required Kubernetes resources and it makes them available from the OpenShift catalog. So we click in the catalog. Then we filter to bring all the Kafka resources. We deploy a Kafka cluster. Click on create and then we are able to configure the cluster. We are going to leave most of the default options, but we'll rename the cluster user. This is going to deploy a three node Kafka cluster and three node Zookeeper. Let's click create. We can check the deployment progress if we go back to the topology view. The operator starts to deploy the Zookeeper stateful set, the Kafka brokers, and after deploying the Kafka nodes, it deploys the user entity operator in charge of topics and user management. Now that we have this cluster deployed, we want to deploy a Kafka Connect that will allow us to start connectors to simplify the replication of data from the source database to our Apache Kafka cluster. With the resources ready, we can deploy the Kafka Connect cluster. We go back again to Add from Catalog and filter for Kafka resources to select Kafka Connect. We will replace the content with the following code. A Kafka Connect cluster called Divisium annotated to the use the connector resources. You can also use the REST API if you don't enable this option. Configure the connection to the user cluster. We previously created a container image with the Divisium connectors ready to be used. You can also use Docker or S2I if you want to build your own images using OpenShift. Click on Create. Now, you can see the status of the topology view. We can follow the progress of the deployment on the pods logs, where you can check that it was successfully deployed. Divisium is the upstream project that provides change data capture connectors for Red Hat integration. This is a project that provides connectors for Kafka Connect and embedded mode for querying the transaction log for different databases, so it can capture the changes in the rows stored in the database then convert those changes into events to be pushed into Apache Kafka. Therefore, we can configure the connector to listen to the enterprise database and store the changes into a specific topic to replicate the orders in the database. Back to the topology view, we can deploy the next element. Click on Add from Catalog, type Kafka, and select this time the Kafka connector. We replace the content with the following configuration. 
we are going to call this connector orders connector. It will be deployed in the division connect cluster. We are going to use the Divisium SQL Server Connector. Following is the configuration information with the connection details. You can read one of the blogs in the developer portal on how to protect this information using secrets to keep your password safe. We did the ID, we ID the records coming from the server using DB and we are whitelisting to listen only in the DBO orders table. Finally, the Kafka connection details. To finalize, we click, click Create. This will start a connector in the Division Connect cluster. Back to the topology view, we click the Division Connect and then we can check the logs where we are able to see that the connector has been started and is now monitoring changes from our data table from our table. Now we are ready to start listening for changes in that specific table from the database. Now that we have configured the Divisium connector, we can start inserting data. We will click on the open URL to show the old enterprise application that we certainly don't want to touch. For this demo, I'm going to load a single order from a file. Let's use this one called single order to insert one order in the database. Let's click on the load file. Now we can see that there is now one record in the orders table with the following details. Now that we have loaded this order, we need to check that it was correctly stored in the database. Go back to the database terminal and let's query. Select from dbo.orders. It shows our records right here. Let's go back to the OpenShift and click Search the Kafka Topics to ensure Division has connectivity to Kafka. Here we can see that all the topics were created correctly, the DB history as well as the dbdbo.orders topic. It's time to check that the topic received the record sent by Division. Back to the topology view, click on User Kafka to log in into one of the broker pods. Go to the terminal and we will use the Kafka console consumer connecting to localhost as we are in the same pod where the broker is running. Let's read from the topic db.dbo.orders, receiving from beginning. The command should return the information stored in the topic, where we can see the record we expected. Let's copy the output and paste it to get a better format. Division records with this type of a structure. First the schema with the different fields, as well as then the payload. Because we did an insert in the database, the before record is null. Meanwhile, the after has the order information. Great, we got the information on the source of the event. Excellent, a new insert order was streamed to Kafka. Let's check what happens with an update. The visitor should create a new record in our topic. Change the quantity from 100 to 75 and correct the address of this shipment. Click on Save. That should update the order in the database. Let's check back the updated database. Back to the database, we issue the same command. This time, the output reflects now the new 75 value. Time to check Kafka. The record is here. Let's select and copy the new record and paste it to fix the format. Again, we have the scheme at the beginning of the record, or this time we have the before value. It shows the old value of 100 and the old address, where the after record has the updated information. However, sometimes we don't need that much information. We need the latest values of the new record, like the one we want to index. So let's change that. Go to search the connector and edit the configuration. In this case, we will keep most as it is. But change the prefix of the topic from DB to SMT to note that we apply the single message transformation. We add a JSON converter for the key and the value. 
we create extract alias for the transformation of type extract new record provided by Divisium. And we will add some fields like the operation type, insert, update, or delete, as well as information from the source table from the database. When we click save, it triggers the changes on the connector. If everything worked fine, the status should be running. Let's go back to Kafka, but now we need to read from the different topic. So instead of reading from DB, we need to read from SMT to return record. It's a more simple version in a JSON format. Let's copy and go back to the formatter where we can see this is the information we want to actually send to Elasticsearch. The following step is to create Kafka Connect cluster for the sync connectors. These sync connectors allow us to take data stored in Kafka cluster topics as events and then send it to external systems. Back to OpenShift, prepare the Kafka Connect cluster for the sync connector. From the topology view, we click on Add. From Catalog, we filter by Kafka and select Kafka Connect. After Create, we replace it. This time we have this configuration named Camel, and also we enable the use of resources. There are many connectors around, created and maintained from different providers. In our case, we are going to use the Apache Camel Kafka connectors. The Apache Camel project maintains several sub-projects under the same umbrella. We can see this from the Camel web page. The connectors allow us to reuse the Camel Connect components as Kafka Connect connectors. In this way, we benefit from the more than 200 components available as part of the Apache Camel ecosystem into the Apache Kafka Connect world. These connects are under Camel3, creating a Camel road that handles the integration from Kafka to the external systems and back. For our case, we are deploying the Camel Elasticsearch REST component. We connect to the, to the user Kafka cluster. In advance, I prepare a container image that bundles the Camel Elasticsearch Kafka Connect connector. We create this new resource and get back to the topology view to check the new element is created and being deployed. Now that we deploy the Kafka Connect cluster, it is time to configure the connector to store the information we are receiving into the Elasticsearch index using the REST API. It's time to configure the Camel connector. We add from Catalog, Connector, Create, and we will replace the editor with our configuration. The name is Camel AES Connector to run in the Kafka Connect cluster called Camel. This connector class is Camel Sync Connector. It uses a string converter for key and value. Configures the sync URL for the Elasticsearch component, the host address to the Elasticsearch server with the operation index and the index name orders. Camel is reading from the smtdbo.orders topic. Now we can check on the log that the connect cluster to review that everything is running correctly. Here we can see that one route was start connected to Kafka and delivering events to Elasticsearch. Let's check that we have received the record. In the OpenShift console, change to the Elastic project and open the URL for the Elastic deployment. If we search in our index, we can see that it returns a result with the same information of the record produced by Divisium from capturing the database events. In these minutes, we demo how to take some records from a database using Tivisium, reading from the transaction log, to send events to Kafka and use Apache Camel to take those events from the Kafka topic and insert them into Elasticsearch. Hope you liked. Thanks for viewing.